trouble with greens. So the first thing I did is I mixed up a pattern of color here. And the only pure green I have is the lemon yellow and the ultra and the phthalo blue. And it's a lot of lemon mixed together to make a permanent green light. So the only real green I have is going to be a pivot point right in the middle of the piece. And wherever I'd say that I'll pick an arbitrary middle. Everything to one side of that in terms of distance is going to yellow and I'm going to go into the reds and everything on the other side of it is going to blue and go is going to cool and go into the blues. So in theory, I'm going to try to go from blue to orange through green and have you believe, believe that the whole thing is green in terms of this transition. In order to do that, I'll pick a boyfriend brush up because Hill ball one and he swears by it. And so I'm reinforcing it. And I'm working on top of wet paint. So the first thing I'll do is wiggle it out, is start with my middle green, and I'll pick a point, a pivot point, at which I want everything to change. So this will be my this will be my, my band of color that's gonna be my pivot point. It's the only real green in the whole painting. And I'll just arbitrarily pick it because in this area it's going to be my brightest and purest color. As I go back, those colors are going to soften. So what I'm going to try to do is get from that to this and have this be a believable shift so that the, we'll see this orange as grass back here and we're going to see this blue as grass up here. And as we transition and grade across that thing, we're going to make this transition from blue through green to orange and it'll be a believable transition in color. And so this is going to sense, in essence, what it's doing is, if you think about it, what I'm doing is taking, adding yellow to the blue to get to the green, and then I'm taking the blue out and adding more yellow, or actually beginning to add red. And that fits with what's happening in the water. Farther back, the water has more red in it, and it comes closer, it gets through the blues, and actually goes back into the red again. But the idea is I'm letting that red fit with what's happening back there. So we're going to, I hope, convincingly find that this is going to be our transition of light. So as we go farther back, we, I'm just going to now I'll blend these two colors together to make a new color and put that across this band. So I'm just gradually stepping forward. Then I'll get to this band. Again, gradually stepping forward, keeping the brightness in. There's all kinds of wet paint and dirt underneath there. Gradually stepping forward on both sides of those trees. Scoop it up again. Grab it up and get back here. Then I'll make that same color, mix it a little bit up with my green. I might have gotten a little too close, but that's still okay. I'll keep pulling that across. Mix a little bit more up. Wow, I'm running out of paint. I can't take that out. And I'll put the trees back. I'm trying to get the land to fade back gradually. I'm trying to extend that to get to the green. I'll get a darker, let's get a lighter green first. Fix that yellow. Ooh. Little <laughs> and I'll get into the pure green. I may need to help a little bit in the shadows. I'll take that pure green and convince us that there's, it belongs here by putting inside the shadows where those trees are going to hit. I'll put just a touch of that green in there. And then as I come forward, I'll start to shift to the blue or green. Absolutely nothing but green grass. I'll be very convinced of it. And I've gone from blue to orange. And the idea is for you to be sold. This is just a natural progression that gives you distance. Once I get all that done, I'll come back and put my trees back in. So that you don't see what it is that I've done. Put the 
trees in and find a shadow, all of a sudden all that transition is, is the tool that lets us see this. Pull the shadow down, and we don't really understand what it, the magic that's involved. down and start to separate this ground, all that transition work that you see, pull another tree you can see how it just transitions right across. And this idea of grading your color is so effective. It's so in terms of enhancement, of getting distance, of getting form. So not only am I grading, am I grading it this way, but I'll also grade the, the colors in the verticals, I'll grade the color in the shadow of the trees, in the foliage itself, so that Everything forms kind of a crescendo to get to the subject matter. And everyone, you know, so this transition of color I'll do for every area. It may be the same color, but it'll be that transition. And look at what's happened. I've gone from purity, pure color, no mixing, lightened and yellow, as it goes this way. I've grayed, add my mixed black and blue and lightened as it's gone this way. So I have a pivot point. That pivot point could be anywhere. I can have this be the purest color and then create it all the way this way. Or I can have this be, yeah. You kind of did this backwards of what we were taught one yeah, time, right? Yeah, As it goes, yeah, because yeah. what we're taught is that it goes back in grays. Or so you, yeah. grays and blue, yeah. Sun, I mean, there's well, the game is that it doesn't matter what game you play as long as you're consistent. No. Okay. So but, it's sort of like you go home with the one that brings you. If, as long as you, as, as long as you're consistent, you're fine. Doesn't matter who you're going with, as long as they brought you. So one day it can be this way, one day it can flip it, one day next day you can flip it. Doesn't matter. But you stay consistent within the game. So the game is my colors are yellowing and lightening as they go back, regardless of what the color is. They're graying and cooling as they come forward, regardless of what the color is. And that's just the game.